Oh well. <laughs> I need to do that. Alright. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, we're recording now, okay? I'll just, I'll just let everyone calm down. Can we get started? Okay. Thank you. James, uh, welcome to the exec hustings for the role of JCR president. As you know, I am Shalane, I am the JCR chair. I'm Elisa, I'm VP Welfare. I'm Tyrion, I'm Kieran, the outreach officer. I'm Callum, I'm senior for it. I'm Jim, JCR president. So you're going to have 20 minutes. Um, you can use it for 10 minutes of your time to talk through your manifesto and your policies in more detail. And um, once we get to 10 minutes, we will then move on to questions. But if you finish beforehand, we, we can just go straight on to questions. Um, if any of us have any, I'll keep it on the time. And um, when you're good to go, just, just get started. Okay, well, um, obviously, wh wh why I'm running in my manifesto is already out there, so people have already seen my policies, my ideas, and a bit about myself. And I've had the chance already at the JSR meeting on Sunday to explain <coughs> this but for the purposes of everyone and for the recording i'll just go over again why i feel i'm the super candidate for this position why i've chose to run and to go over some of my policies but obviously if you want further explanation upon those policies that's when you have the chance to ask me greater in depth so why i've chose to run it wasn't a decision that i came to instantly it was something that i undenied about for a while but i ultimately thought that by me running and if I were to be present it would put Mildred in a very good position going forward over across the next year. I think Mildred has given me so much in the time that I've been here and it's allowed me to develop so much in myself through various committees, societies etc that I've been a part of and they've all given me such valuable skills um, for life and I'm very very grateful for the college and the JCR for that and so for me the only way that I can repay this debt that I owe is to spend an entire year of my life dedicated to the JCR to to enhance it and to enhance the student experience for the JCR members um, both in the short term across what would be the term of my presidency and in the long term going forward. Why I feel that I would be a suitable candidate is because I've my involvement is quite widespread from sport, outreach, um, theatre and um, welfare. I've, I've covered almost all sections of Mildred life so my knowledge and my experience is very detailed of that and I also believe because I haven't previously been on the JCR exec it puts me in the unique um, position to going forward because I've I see how the exec works on the outside I see how the decisions made um, by small group people within college affect the majority of students and I've seen how that's affected my own student experience sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse so having that unique perspective means that if I were to then come in to the exec within um, the highest position of present it would allow me to make the exec more open and actually affect positive change that will work for the majority of the students rather than just the members of the exec um, so in, ter in terms of some of my policies, I mean, th they are, they're stated on my manifesto um, quite clearly. Um, but I think one of my main ones is the issue of transparency. That's something I have just raised there about um, why I feel I'd be suitable and why I've, cho I've chose to run. Um, there's so much ha that happens behind closed doors in this college that affects the student uh, experience. And it's why I'm grateful that this, this meeting is being recorded and made available for everyone to hear so that people can actually hear these discussions um, because which, whichever president is elected they will have a direct impact upon um, every JCR member and so I think it's only fair that the JCR members understand who they would be electing but at the moment people don't have the option to know what is going on within college um, they may want to know they may not want to know it's completely up to them but they should at least be given that option that's why I think things such as exec meetings and um, minutes should be published from them, why they should be um, held more openly and why there should be more communication through weekly emails directly with JCR members so that at least the information is there so people can see what is happening. Um, in terms of availability, again, that is just being a figure that is always there and available um, for people. I'd like to think I already have and um, have that and possess that through the positions that I hold within my committees and societies and I, that I'm a figure there that people can come to and that would be something that would continue forward um, as president. In terms of inclusivity I want to make this a college that works for everyone in which everyone feels welcome I think that is essential because what makes Mildred such a 
Mildred and the community here is its GCR members and that includes everyone. So everyone therefore has to have the same sense of belonging and feel that they actually belong, whether they are actively involved in the JCR or not, but to know that they have a home over the, here over the course of their time at university. So moving on to some of my actual ideas, I've talked a bit about accessibility and that's one of the ones um, that I'm very keen to push for because this building is not fit for purpose for people with, with disabilities. I've given tours around college um, to people who are in wheelchairs and I've had to say to them, I'm sorry, but you can't simply go down the stairs. You have to go all the way around the building and I'll see you again in three minutes time downstairs. And I did not enjoy feeling like that. And so I want to ensure that things like that and for anyone who wants to apply to Milda who has a physical disability is not put off by the fact that this building is simply not accessible for them. Um, I also want to set up a new committee, which I've said that under potential name of the JCR Advisory Committee, simply as a voice, simply to give a voice to um, JCR members who may feel that they don't have the ability to influence active change within college. Yes, the JCR exec and the execs of societies, committees, etc., can directly um, implement change, but for the average JCR member who may be just a member of a few committees or societies or doesn't actually partake. Um, directly in um, so, um, society, etc., but still comes to Mildred events. I want to make sure that they actually have a voice, and so that's why this committee will be an open committee for people who do not serve on any form of exec, so that they can propose um, changes and discuss how they feel Mildred works or doesn't work for them. And then these ideas that are brought up can then be discussed at wider JCR meetings and within open exec meetings um, to see, to ensure basically that Mildred works for all its members so those are just that's just a brief outline of some, of some of these things but for the rest of my time that i want to yield to yourself so that you can know and ask what you want to know um yeah i've got one for student well-being so you said that you want to work with vp welfare to ensure all exec members receive welfare training mm -hmm. Um, considering that all um, exec members are FRAPs, they by default will receive basic welfare training. So what would you want to expand on what they already receive? Okay, well, um, obviously, yes, they, they do receive, receive the FRAP training and that is adequate to a degree in that, what I think that kind of knowledge is very much limited to the FRAP context and maintains within those two weeks. So I'm thinking of terms of like the whole university courses of active bystander and safeguarding and others that are being developed. And I should clarify, um, well, in, t in terms of the full wide university ones, it would be for every exec member so that they can be all the points of contact, not to take away and detract from talking sports as a system because that is still the ultimate central system. But I want to ensure that there are additional points of contact to so say if the outreach officer has these specific um, training, then he can support directly support the heads of the outreach programs. Um, and same with if the sports and societies officer has this training, then they can support uh, um, presidents um, of, of sports clubs and societies and um, almost instill from a top down approach and um, these issues. Um, that point, uh, it's probably how I've uh, phrased it as well, but when I refer to exec members, I'm also referring to specifically like presidents of sports, clubs, okay. societies, etc. And in terms of um, the training that I'm referring there as, as well would be a program that would be created by myself and um, the VP Welfare. So it wouldn't be the, the direct university-wide ones, it would be a more located one specifically within Mildred because to ensure that there's, again, degrees and support of welfare within all societies and committees because at the moment I don't feel there is that and as a result some some issues may make their way to um, our centralised welfare through the talk and support, but other issues may not and they may just remain within a sports club and there, but if there's not someone there with some sort of knowledge, um, not acting in a talk and support capacity, but being aware of welfare issues and how to respond, simply saying that it's okay if you're struggling like this, I can help you out if, um, if I can, or I can refer you on to talk and support so that welfare is accessible for everyone. What college prep we get? This one, I would, I wouldn't make the executive decision on this one. I would allow. If you did, if 
Oh. <laughs> it would have to be something that is low maintenance. Yeah. It, um, <laughs> and personally, I was quite in favour of a bearded dragon. Right, yeah. Because they kind of just sit in like uh -huh. a tank and just. How does Sunday. everyone get access to it? So it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who's gonna, who's gonna prevent being nipped on a night out? <laughs> I, 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 I will grant that is a valid point, but the entire this entire concept would have to be something that is discussed with college. Um, what was they say? No, you're gonna go ahead and get a bearded dragon. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't directly contravene, but I would discuss with college because. Yeah. Um, there is scientific studies that prove that animal therapy needs to increase um, positive mental health mm -hmm. for people, um, which is why I talked about as previously run things such as animal farms. And I think even if it's just something there as a presence that people could come and see, it may just take five minutes out of someone's day and they may just sit there and just watch this bearded dragon just <laughs> lay there <laughs> or just like say a hamster running around um, on its wheel yeah. and it may just actually help someone mentally. <laughs> Yeah, great. great. I mean, on on that note about um, you know, if college were to, to reject it, uh, how, how would you seek to resolve and deal with conflicts between college staff and, and the students in, in your exam? So, Could you elaborate on what? Well, say, say say for example, some of your students want to do something, mm -hmm. um, someone on your exec has an idea, college disagrees, say no, we don't want to do that. Or for example, if staff say. You know, we're not happy with the way one of your executives are behaving, or vice versa. When your exec says, you know, I'm not happy with this particular member of college staff, how would you go about dealing with that situation? Yeah, well, there's two questions yeah, in sure. there, so I'll, I'll address the issue of like some something like the, um, happening in terms of like an event or something. I don't, um, obviously, if I'd be, I'm very prone to allow students to express their creativity and express their thoughts, and I want them to say how they think things should be run and what they would like to see change obviously college upper college itself may have a different approach and that is perfectly fine but yes that does create conflict but I don't believe instantly college saying no should be the end of the conversation yes it may ultimately decide that college are writing this um say some students wanted to plan an event and this event can't go forward but there should be an open discussion where between these two sides probably in person because that's the best way to actually articulate ideas um, to each other so that an actual dialogue can be um, discussed and a decision made in terms of if there's issues raised by members of college about members of exec did you say vice versa as well yeah um, then th uh, if it, I mean if an issue is raised about a member of of the exec well there is a process already outlined within the constitution to deal with um issues and, and conduct uh, for the exec so that process would simply fall because i believe that's quite an adequate process if it's the case of the other way around and there's an issue in which someone has raised about a member of the college staff then again i'm not fully aware of the exact specific details of this but i do also understand that there is a complaints process um structure within the university and within college if the person wanted to raise a formal complaint but I would before things got to that stage I would like to encourage an actual dialogue to see if some sort of see first of all if it was maybe a misunderstanding and to see if some sort of peaceful um, solution can be reached simply within house and within the actors involved in that situation personally. Sure. sure. When you say you're going to push for an expansion of college events like what does that mean? So in, in terms in in terms of that I mean just, it's, it's, I'm trying to think out first, it's sorry. Um, so events are college wide events are simply like the social highlights of the year and it allows well, it, it's it's what people will probably remember and enjoy about their time here at university. And so I think there's so many benefits upon the student experience and student social life that, sorry, that they're very essential. Um, in terms of expanding them, whether this is physically increasing their size, obviously we have size restrictions within college, so that does prevent 
issues itself, but if we look at um, events that have previously ran, with the exception of like say a ball, I haven't seen an event that actually reaches capacity. So, so in terms of expanding, that goes more on the side of advertising it and saying the incentives of coming to an event and um, the incentives being like on on their on their, their own social benefit and almost encouraging them to come um, to it. So, what sort of things would you do to encourage them? Well, at the, at the end of the day, if the student doesn't want to come to the event, mm. there's nothing that can be done about mm. that, but it would be working with the the heads of, of the different events to just simply push and publicise them further. Obviously, there is a limit. You don't want to over-publicise something because then that may deter people from actually mm. coming to it, um, but simply to just increase the awareness of events and the benefits of them because some events you, you see are very well attended, um, some not so much, um, and whether it's personal preference or if it's the nature of the event at the time is unbeknown and I don't think there's a way to actually um, clarify that, but simply to just to get, yeah. Um, on the topic of independence, um, okay, two -parter, uh, what sort of hurdles do you foresee? You're saying you want a smooth uh, and transparent transition, what sort of things do you think you can really smooth over? The second part of that, uh, what about yourself do you think you can bring that might help in this transition period? Well, hopefully there wouldn't be hurdles to overcome. We would like to think that it is a smooth um, process. Sorry. Um, I will say here that um, the, the, the exact extent of, obviously there's a lot of work being underdone currently by, by yourself, um, but the exact extent of how much I know about this currently is very limited because all of this discussion is happening behind closed doors. So I don't actually know the ins and outs, and well, those outside of the exec don't know the ins and outs of how independence is directly going to affect us or the processes that are currently being put in place. Um, but obviously there are several months between now and when my, my term would begin and when the independence would take place so that I would be able to sufficiently gain that, that knowledge. Um, what was the second part of the question? So, um, what do you think basically uniquely you'll bring uh, in that will help in this transition period? Um, I, I think I have a very calm and collective approach to things. Obviously this is going to be I don't want to say stressful, but it's quite a, a big thing. Um, I think my the approach that I take to things is very uh, methodical, and I, I break things down very smoothly, and so that I know just what is happening and how directly it will affect people. And again, to ensure that this is smooth, this is why I also want to link this back to my idea of being transparent, and so that just so that um, JCL members know just exactly what is happening and how this independence will directly f affect them rather than just a full a few bullet points it would be a more detailed um account of, of how this will affect the college any other questions I have to get one. um just on the kind of environmental aspect of your manifesto i think obviously it's something very important and very popular at the moment mm -hmm. i was just kind of wondering if you had any concrete ideas on you mentioned box or uh, i don't know perhaps freshest week or mm -hmm. events within that on how you can make them more environmentally friendly and kind of concrete policies? Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, the, there's, there's two points here. One is already being addressed, and that's the use of plastic cups at the bar, and I know work is already in, pro in process for that. And the other is in terms of um, ends and decks. So, so some of the event ends that we bring in, like specifically like the food ones, say they can create quite a lot of um, a lot of mess and generally that just gets chucked into like well what is given to students and then students just throw on the floor and then that just gets chucked into a rubbish right at the end of the day in terms of the decks events are always consistently buying new decks each time even though we have the entire deck covered yes the deck covered is in quite a state so that's why the exact extent of what decks we have available is unknown but I'd want to um, create some sort of catalogue of all the decks that we have so that events committees um, know specifically what is there already so therefore they don't have to, well, first of all, waste money on buying something that we already have 
then also contributing to unnecessary um, purchases of things that are detrimental to the environment. Equally, I'd want to make sure that the decks that we use, if they are to be single-use ones, are recyclable, um, as, um, because we shouldn't, we simply shouldn't be throwing away things that just and um, aren't recyclable and contributing more to our carbon footprint. So we've got we're essentially out of time, but um, within about a minute or less, could you summarise what you think the role of JCL president is? president is someone who is there to lead but also to listen. They're there to ensure um, a, s a smooth course of the JCR across um, their term but also to listen to the members of the exec around them and take on board criticism and new ideas and take on and listen to every member of the JCR be a point of contact that everyone should know is available for them and they can come and speak to if they need to simply bring up new ideas about things they want to change raise questions about why some things are happening be there as a point of contact for welfare or even just to come into the chat and sit and have an office for come into the office <laughs> and have a chat for a few, a few minutes it's to be a figurehead of the college for everyone and be a face and a, pre a peasant presence <laughs> and a person <laughs> that everyone can come to. Sure. Okay. Thank you ever so much, James. Yeah. Uh, that concludes our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>